Welcome everyone. My name is Esther Duflo. I'm a professor of economics at MIT and one of the directors of the Jamil Poverty Action Lab, otherwise known as JPL. I want to thank you all for being here and thank you, most importantly, for the work you are doing. Many of you are women entrepreneurs all around the world and also many of you probably wonder what is the impact of your action. Are you really doing the work that you're hoping to do in the world? Are you seeing the good that you are hoping to be in the world? So what I thought I would do today is to tell you a story of uh, women entrepreneurs, of supporting women entrepreneurs in the poorest countries in the world and supporting the poorest uh, women entrepreneurs of the poorest villages in those countries. And I want to also tell you a story of impact, which is how we go about and finding out whether this particular program was useful and uh, what are the consequences of having been a beneficiary of this program over the next several years. So many years ago now, uh, BRAC, a wonderful institution in Bangladesh, uh, which was primarily a, um, a development organization and a microcredit organization, realized that the poorest women in the village where they went to were not so interested in accessing microcredit. And they started wondering why, and they realized that uh, these women who often lived very, very difficult lives were unable to, uh, uh, to really find a project that would generate enough revenue to be able to reimburse the loans. So the woman preferred staying aside, not take advantage of this opportunity, and continue living very difficult life, uh, relying on alms from people or relying on very menial jobs, such as being maids in people's homes. So they decided that if they wanted to unleash the entrepreneur in those women, they had to do something different than microcredit. And they launched what they called the graduation program with the idea of you're graduating from poverty are using your own entrepreneurial spirit. And what they did is they developed a program where people were given an asset, not loaned an asset, but given an asset to start an activity. So the asset could be uh, a couple of, of cows or a few goats or enough uh, money to start a small business or maybe a sewing machine to start uh, sewing clothes for people. And people were given these assets along with 15 months of support. Uh, financial support early on so that people wouldn't be tempted to liquidate the asset before it could give revenues. Uh, and also technical support, so for example cows were vaccinated and a woman who had been uh, given money to start a small business were brought to the market to show them where they could shop and so on and so forth. As well as home life support, so a woman who couldn't read were uh, given basic literacy classes, everyone was encouraged to start savings, and so on and so forth. After 15 months, this program is over. Overall, the, the cost of the program depends uh, on the country, but it, it's about twice the cost of the asset if you take into account all of the support that came into that. The idea of BRAC in launching this program is that that would unleash a sort of virtuous circle that would undo the vicious circle in which this woman uh, were stuck and therefore that it would be like a big push that would push them out of a poverty trap. But of course they didn't know for sure whether it was the case. Their early experience with the program in Bangladesh seemed encouraging, uh, but they really wanted to know whether they made a difference or not. So for that they teamed up with a team at the LSE who uh, started working with them on setting up a randomized control trial. What's a randomized control trial? Well, it is very much the same thing as you do, for example, to test a new vaccine of, against COVID. Some people get the program and otherwise don't. And they are randomly selected such that there is no difference between them other than the fact that they got the program. So for this first randomized control trial in Bangladesh, uh, BRAC selected uh, random villages and compared and then selected beneficiaries in their usual way and then compared the outcomes of the uh, women, the poorest women in beneficiary villages to similar women in non-beneficiary villages. And they found very encouraging effect after 15 months and after three years. But then I still wanted to know whether this was just a Bangladesh effect or whether this was true in general. So along with a, a set of colleagues, we launched seven similar projects all around the world. Uh, one in India, 
one in Honduras, uh, one in Ethiopia, and so on and so forth. So seven of these projects were started together. BRAC was a convening power, so every year people from various organizations that were running this program around the world met in Paris and they exchanged notes and they made sure that the program was adapted to the local condition but remained faithful to the original idea of the graduation program. And then different research teams collected data. Each of these projects was run similarly as a randomized control trial, so we could get very, very solid results. So this program ran for 15 months, and then the women were followed uh, until three years in the seven additional countries. And what was remarkable is that across all the countries, the results that were found were strikingly similar to the results that were found in Bangladesh. Namely, women after three years were much uh, wealthier, without being wealthy, but much more comfortable. They were less likely to report uh, moments where they didn't have food to put on the table. They were also bad, their mental health had improved, their physical health had improved, uh, and in general, the entire household was doing much better. So this was true across countries. Uh, and what the conclusion from this was that if the, the benefits could be sustained at that same level, within four years, the program was paying from itself in terms of the benefits that people had experienced. So this was very much an answer of saying this is something worth doing. The benefits to the beneficiaries are larger than the costs. But of course, it was only three years. So the question was, would these benefits persist over time? So what we have done in one of the countries in India is we've continued to follow them. In Bangladesh as well, women have been continued to be followed, but I'll tell you about the India experience because that's the one I was closely involved with. So we surveyed the women again after seven years, and we surveyed them again after 10 years. And what we found is that the benefits keep increasing, and they keep changing. Early on, women mostly uh, took care of their cows. By seven years, they had kind of tended to shift the business and were doing more non-agricultural business. So for example, little shops or sewing machines. By 10 years, the original beneficiary women are now you know, starting to retire. So the business actually is winding down, but you're still finding large effect. They come through the second generation of children who are now adults, young adults, who tend to migrate to the cities and go further and get uh, more money in this way. So as a result, we can now be sure that the program after 10 years already has paid more uh, uh, for itself. In fact, after four years, it was already paying for itself. After 10 years, it's a return of uh, almost 400%. And if the benefits were going to continue in perpetuity, this would be a rate of returns on investment in the excess of 1,000%. Uh, so this is a, a, a fant fantastic social investment. Of course, this is a social investment. No one realizes the value of that except each individual woman. So in these particular instances, it's something that had to be paid for. But it's a great model of what uh, either philanthropists or policymakers could do. And having this very solid data, both from the seven countries and then the longitudinal data from, several, uh, from, from India and Bangladesh in particular, helped convince government to adopt this kind of graduation approach as part of their strategy and help uh, convince a group of donors to, to, to invest considerable amount of money in this type of programs. So today, thanks to this advocacy, and thanks to these results, uh, the program now reaches 600,000 women uh, all around the world. And presumably, all of these women are benefiting from this impact. And this is a story which could not have been possible without the, the vision of BRAC, and which also could not have been possible without the intervention of, of researchers and JPA and IPA that helped set up this evaluation, and without, of course, the funding of visionary like the Ford Foundation and CGAP, who f saw the usefulness of investing not just in the program that looked quite expensive compared to other things one can do, but also in its rigorous evaluation. I wish you all the best in your work and uh, hope to meet you soon.